Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat. It's episode 76. We've got people here. We've got things to talk about. We were just having a great pre-show getting ready for you folks. We're talking about it's all true. sorts of stuff we couldn't say on air. Uh, joining me this week is one Ian Gibson. Hi, I'm ready for this to be over. And also joining us, not Kyle Bailey, but the man who is replacing him, Jake Terrio. Hi, I've got my uh, Horizon Zero Dawn Lego Tallneck up on my shelf now. I don't know no, if no, it's no, in no, view no, or no, not. No, 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 no. Let's talk about that A-Wing, baby. That's good looking. Yeah, the, the Ultimate Edition A-Wing. I got my, you can't see it, but I have my Bandai uh, A-Wing mm -hmm. right there. I got my Seinfeld. And your Saturn v Seinfeld up there. Um, can't see it. Great podcast. Yeah. Great podcast, <laughs> folks. For the, um, I was gonna say, Jake. We've actually um, we've talked to his building managers, and uh, at some point during the show, there's gonna be an, a cr crazy alarm that's gonna go off and let us all know I that really he's won a million dollars in the middle of this. <laughs> um, I love it, honestly. <laughs> I'm loving. I'll join in on the phone, and I'll be uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll outside. be outside. <laughs> outside on the phone uh folks we're here to talk about video games we're here to talk about all sorts of things uh first off y'all uh on the call with me you could hear the intro music correct that's yes. correct awesome uh because that's going to be important later um Ooh. let's talk about the games we've been playing shall we um, yes please and i don't mean to uh barge in like the host of this show but i'm going first so get ready for it folks um i just want to get two things out of the way i played the demo for sweet transit a little bit it's very fun i'm enjoying it i need to play more of it i need to actually check when those steam demos disappear um if neither of you see what this game looks like it basically looks like the trains from roller coaster tycoon or locomotion or any chris mm -hmm. sawyer game but a little mm -hmm. bit more high res um, and, and as like a railroad sim game railroad right? sim it seems like a mix of that and <sighs> that was it railroad empire you played ian railway empire. railway empires because you're like putting towns and stuff there was some funky stuff i wasn't quite figuring out um but i couldn't tell if like i just missed the pop-up for it or like it's a demo and it's not quite fixed yet uh but that game comes out at the end of the month um so i don't know how long the demo's around for but I think it launches in early access, which also plays into the sort of issues yeah, with it. It looked cool. Um, it looked cool. Yeah, yeah, super fun. Uh, Dragon Quest Twelve. Sorry, Zach. There's no sound alerts during this show. Builders um, or original flavor? Would you call me? Oh, Dragon Quest I Twelve. Of a different, JRPG. Uh, JRPG. JRPG. Yeah. Dragon Quest Builders Dark One and Church. Two are a different game, but I do like Dragon mm. Quest Builders. Fifteen hours in that demo, and then the full game. It wanted me to buy. Uh, which is crazy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Dragon Quest Twelve. I'm just playing through it. It's nice. It's way less grindy than eight was. Um, I haven't like had to spend time in the overworld fighting monsters to like get more powerful to fight the bosses I've been encountering. I've passed every boss so far with flying colors. Um, I know. I think eight had this, but in JRPGs, obviously, you pick the powers for each person and you attack with them and everything. But in Dragon Quest, you just have tactics. So I can select uh, fight wisely for all of my people, or I could do I like kick text. Yeah, or I could do like favor, favor healing, favor uh, defense, favor offense. So is that is that for all characters, or is that all like characters a main character that you get more detail me. with? Okay, so there's four gotcha. in my party. So I only choose the powers and everything for me. Everyone else does their own thing. And so far... I man, I kind of like that. So far, it's been flawless. Like, the Serena, who's the main healer, she has always healed me or the person... Uh, if, if someone has low health, she'll heal them. But if I and someone else have low health, she'll heal me first. Because mm -hmm. the party will wipe if I don't get healed first. Um, the story's been pretty great so far. It kind of... It, it was going for one thing at the beginning and it kind of it's it, i should say it, it flew over my head because i wasn't expecting it to do it um if you like think about it it's not some huge clever thing they did i just wasn't i was just expecting it this to be a cookie cutter game and they just kind of did something different which was kind of nice uh and then they did a couple other things different um and the 2d mode's pretty cool all that sort of stuff 
Uh, I know I talked about it a little bit last week, but the main game I want to talk about, folks, is Supermassive's The Quarry. This came is this out in their dark something. It yeah. is not in their this dark is, pictures. It it is. It's it's the same exact game. They just keep remaking it in different settings, different it, characters. It's anyway. dark pictures. It is not a dark yes. pictures. This is two K published. Uh, it is a separate it, entity. It is. Um, it's the same thing. Same developers. Okay. <laughs> to to answer your question, Jake, I know what you're asking, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes. We don't need to get into the details, but yes. It's, it's the Quarry is a fantastic video game, and it is better than Until Dawn, and it is better than all of the other projects, the whatever they're called. Um, and the I'm putting name? it on the game of the year the... list. God damn it! God it is damn it! So good. Oh, piece of it. shit. I don't want to play this game. David Arquette, I'm... Ted Raimi, uh, Lance Henriksen. Oh, Lance look, Henriksen okay. in this? Before, before you tell How me why this game is great. Wrap him into a mocap suit. And I, I'm not saying it's not great, but here, there's so many things this game is doing that I don't like. Number one, horror. Don't want it. Number mm. two, it's taking famous celebrities and just mocapping and shoving their faces into a video game and saying, look, isn't this making our video game better by having established, you know, uh, actors? And it's like, no, I don't like that. 99% of the time, it doesn't work. Number three is that, and again, I could be completely wrong about this. It seems very like dialogue heavy, like, oh, do some dialogue branching here. It's all about like almost like FMV, like here's something happening. Now choose what happens next type of thing. And I don't, I generally don't like that in video games. But now you're an asshole that's making me play this because i'm trying to play everything on the game of the year list so i and i don't think you'll like this game at all and that's okay oh, i can't wait to play it now <laughs> oh i can't wait to play but i i love every second of it season. karen and i played together couch co-op uh so you each get randomized characters and then you get to switch back and forth um there's also a movie mode if you want to do that ian where you just watch the whole thing um you can do which is pretty great right. Can, um, I, I, I'm a very important question about that though. Can you switch to that? Halfway you can through? switch to it at any time. Yes. Okay. You can I'm going to do anything that at any time. I don't mean to jump ahead of you, but it, I'm guessing the very strong point in this is the story. And if I could just get to a point where I go, I know what this game is now. Streamline the rest of the story. Magnific. Yeah. Uh, so we're officially already going to replay it again because there are so many things that happened that I genuinely don't. No, I think there's like six main endings. They tout that there's like hundreds of endings, but I don't know exactly how this, how it would have gone if there's like seven or eight characters that would have died earlier in the game if I hadn't done anything and which would have drastically changed the outcome in my brain. So I need to see how they handled it. Um, so anyways, uh, anyway, it's about these camp counselors. They're at, they do a whole summer of camp counseling uh, and then they go to go home, but the car's not working david arquette the camp leader is like hey you gotta leave and they're like oh we can't tonight why don't we just stay another night and he goes no you can't stay another night uh and like kind of ticks off from there um so the story's really i don't want to say anything about the story because i don't want to spoil anything um i thought it was i really think cool. you just said everything yeah, yeah everything story, i need to say pretty much um yeah. the acting Courtney i thought Cox was great the across killer. the board um i don't know how they how they did this game but their previous games they actually mocap faces and uh, movements separately, which is how they get these games done so quickly. Like L.A. Noir. Uh, I guess like L.A. Noir. I mean, if that works, it's smart, but that's risky. So all the actors, like famous people, are like sit in chairs and like move around and act with each other. But then when they go to do the final body stuff, they just have stunt doubles. Bring it. Uh, which I think is smart. Yeah. Um, you don't want to hurt your actors or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I just, I, it, as someone who's played until dawn and then tried to get into the dark pictures, the dark pictures just didn't have anything that was compelling about them. All their characters kind of sucked and all the stories kind of really, They're really felt flat. Insufferable. Yeah. And I'm not saying this story is some crazy thing that's going to win an Oscar or something, but it was engaging the entire time that made me be like, I need to see how this ends. And that was exciting. Uh, graphics cool. wise, I played on the Series X. Uh, everything looked absolutely gorgeous. There were moments where I thought I was watching an FMV game. Like, I like 
my brain flipped and I was just like, mm. oh, is, oh, they just shot this scene for is some that reason. David Arquette? Um, I didn't even realize it. Which is weird because how did they get a celebrity in my video yeah. games? Which is crazy because like the I, the Star Wars stuff has never worked for me. The the Grand Moff or Leia or Luke, those are always like Uncanny Valley, or you have to make yourself well, yeah, sort of believe. The juxtaposition of digital characters, and yeah, real characters. yeah, that's true. it's all digital. Um, but and there were some shots here together. where I just thought it was real to the point where um I thought. You know, when you see live action in high frame rate, it looks wrong, like soap opera effect. Yes. That clicked into my brain for a couple scenes where I was like, oh, this looks terrible because it's got the soap opera effect on it because I think these people are real and they're not real. Um, the only problem, which I think they've tried to patch, is there are a couple scenes with quick resume where hair, like a, a lady's hair was to here and just was going like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> And then the only other thing, the water, I don't know what has happened, looks awful. It's so bad. The water is so bad. It's not bad. Uh, it's bad in the sense that it's obviously broken. Like, when water splashes up, it just, like, makes everything see-through. Uh, and I've seen that oh. in other games. And I know something's wrong, and I know they're trying to fix it. But it just... Thankfully, there's not too many water scenes, but it looks so bad. Specifically when characters are in water. Um, it's just kind of wild. Um, but outside of that, if you've played Until Dawn, if you've played any of the Dark Pictures, it's not the gameplay isn't that far off. You're thankfully when you find items, you're not slowly rotating them to look at them. There's none of that. You're just picking it up to look at it. They play a scene. If you want to look at it again, you just click on it and it just quick cuts to it, and you can just look at it. Um, there's tarot cards in between each. Uh, chapter where a lady in a uh, like a gypsy lady with her crystal ball tells you the tarot cards you have to pick one of the tarot cards to predict the future for one of the things you can't see all of them um, the Peter Stormare yeah Peter Stormare she kind of thing. also all of her scenes tricked me she looks like they just filmed it and the woman uh, I <laughs> She probably has better roles than this, but I only know her as uh, George Costanza's mother-in-law, um, who's always drunk oh. in Seinfeld. That is the lady who plays the gypsy woman, and it's just very funny to me, because the whole time I was just imagining Seinfeld. Um, I am sorry, I didn't... I was like, yeah, sure, I'll play this game. I'll stick to my Game of the Year agreement. I didn't realize this is $70 yes. on the consoles. This is my third thing. So I don't know. I'm assuming 2K is just greedy. Um, it's seventy dollars for the next gen version, PS5, Xbox Series X. Uh, it's sixty dollars for the PS4, Xbox One version, um, which just seems like they fit it into that category. I I can't. I'm, I just weird that Xbox would let that happen. Um, yeah. But I, I just see it. PC. It's also sixty. Halloween time. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I do not think it's worth $70. I, I think I got so $70 worth of enjoyment out of it, but I don't. I would not have someone pay $70 for this game. Um, I, did, I did not get this through work or anything. I paid $70 for it. Um, I, I think it's worth it if you like Until Dawn and you like Dark Pictures and stuff. I don't. Uh, I, I know don't. you don't. Uh, so <laughs> I would wait for it to go on sale or anything like that, um, but... Like I said, it's going on the list. I really enjoyed it. Um, I had a great time. Uh, and they're so and the QTEs are easy. It's great. Uh, they stopped. Oh, perfect. They give you perfect amount of warning, and it's all uh, left thumbstick directions. It's none of that stupid uh, face buttons. Uh, and it's it's great. Uh, and the only time you mess them up is when you try to guess, and you're like, oh, I know which way it's gonna go, and then you, you fuck up. Um, mm -hmm. people die yep I feel like there's one or two more things I want to say about it but that's basically it I had a great time playing it uh, super fun so it's going on the list definitely check it out um, Jake why don't you tell mm -hmm. me about the games you've been playing yeah so I'll start with the quick ones still playing Destiny it's a new season new story season of the trauma um, trauma <laughs> <laughs> Ian doesn't care um, no, that's the perfect name for playing this <laughs> series. Trauma. No, trauma. It's to, they're to a point 
um, in an, another way that it's kind of inaccessible to new players, they're to a point where they are resolving loose story threads with characters who have been in the series since the beginning um, and giving them kind of like these resolutions to past traumatic experiences that they've been through. So it's interesting. Gunplay's still really fun. Back to the Leviathan, which was a, a, a space from vanilla Destiny 2 that got vaulted like two years ago or something. Um, that's that. Um, I Because I bought the Horizon Zero Dawn tall neck, I then went and I'm like, I should actually play Horizon Forbidden West. So I downloaded it. It's 80 something gigabytes and I'm about wow. three and a half hours into it. Um, so the story hasn't really kicked off in a super meaningful way, um, but the combat and the exploration are still fun. There has been a fair amount. I'm playing it on PS4. There has been a fair amount of um, Wait texture a minute. popping. Have, you've played this game before, right? Horizon Forbidden West? Horizon Zero Dawn 2? Oh, sorry. My apologies. The names are so similar that I got confused there. Yeah. It's the sequel. <laughs> I have no <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> so confused. I have played Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Twice through. Oh, God. Um, Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, yeah. I just want to get to the Golden Gate Bridge. I'll see how long it takes Blow me to it get up. there. Um, I, and- um, not, not to hop on this too much, but I P, uh, PlayStation Plus Premium launched this week in North America. And along with that was Game Trials. And I thought it was funny that most of the Game Trials are three hours, except for Forbidden West, I believe, is an eight-hour Game Trial. <laughs> which probably ties, probably ties into a lot of the complaints being that game starts very, very slow and takes forever to get going. It does. I was kind of surprised by how many cutscenes I sat through in the first hour or so. Especially because I'm, I'm like, I played the other game. I, I know all the systems already. I don't need to do like the like, hey, we should probably gather some such and such to teach you how to do the collecting yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I wanted to kind of just have um, Tim Rogers talks about his game dev feature that he wants to see in all games is the I get it button. <laughs> where if at a point yeah. you just be like, okay, I get it. And it will skip you to the, like the next yeah. meaningful point. Um, I would have liked that just to advance it a little bit. But um, yeah, playing it on PS4, the cutscenes are mostly in engine. And I was surprised that even in cutscenes, I was getting some texture popping on like you know, stuff, walls, props, that kind of thing. But um, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, <gasps> Will has added a game to the game of the year list. I have added a game to the game of the year list. I played uh, Citizen Sleeper from Jump Over the Age, the indie development studio of Dr. Gareth Damian Martin, um, PhD. That What's his doctorate in? What's his doctorate in? I don't know. Fishing? Does, Does he, he call himself they have doctor? One? Does he deserve know, to be called doctor? I, I know that they have a doctorate. <laughs> Can um, you touch you? No, but this game is not a real doctor. (laughs) uh, I played their previous title in Other Waters, which I don't know if I ever talked about on stream or not. It was a marvelous little, like, mostly UI focused game where you're exploring, like, a. Is that the one that sucked? I'm sorry, but there was one that was like. You're thinking of Sea of Solitude. No, no, there's another one. It's not in Other Waters. There was some game that had, like, a whole bunch of, like, hype for it and had a lot of pedigree behind it and austin walker from giant bomb and waypoint did some writing for it and then it came out and it was just like panned they were just oh, like no. not a good game this not had no game. pedigree behind it this you know okay. if their waters was the their first game and so citizen sleeper is game number two um <laughs> but um as i kickstarted in other waters and so i was already kind of you know gonna buy this game when it came out and at seeing like development updates from it it was just checking all my boxes it's set on a space station in distant space it's like you know post-capitalist whatever yada 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 the art direction was great the music was great and the story is phenomenal it's the pitch is it's a t it's a tabletop rpg in video game form it's like the closest you can get to a tabletop RPG without 
a, a, a game master guiding, you know, the narrative or anything. And it gets pretty dang close to that. It's, I'm already kind of planning my next playthrough because it was like super apparent as I was going through that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to track down that story thread by the time this is over. I've got to, you know, I want to focus on this. I'm going to focus on this. And just all these really like characters, you'd be like, oh, well, I'm definitely going to revisit that later. Um, yeah, I'm rambling about it because it's, it's, There's it's been getting a, a lot, lot of really, yeah. really good press. I, I yeah. want to play. And it. the day after I finished it, there was a an update as part of one of these summer fests that um, it's going to have free updates of episodic content, um, adding new story stuff. Um, nice for I think I think three, at least at this initial push, there's going to be three free story updates. The first of which I think is either later this month or early next month. Um, That's soon. Because the game's on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. So it's free on top of free, pretty much. Yeah, it's super good. And I, yeah, like, the UI is great. The art direction, just in general, is great. The music is wonderful. The writing is really some, I think, like, we talked about on the, the Halo TV show review that I had been watching just a little lot of really good science fiction stuff leading up to watching that tv show and like a lot Halo, of really yeah. well-written stuff and i've you know i've got like 90 percent of the books on this shelf for sci-fi books um but this citizen sleeper has some of the best science fiction writing i'd say of the past 20 years um it's really solid and really good mm. um, as a mostly narrative game there is we lost ian we've lost, we lost ian. his video He's gone. Um, I know, I know. I'm taking care of it. Keep going. He's gone. Um, yeah, just really good. There's a lot of reading. There's the table, the biggest tabletop, not the biggest tabletop element, but one of the elements of like the tabletop facade is that you get a dice at the beginning of each cycle that you use to complete tasks. Um, if, you know, if you use a six for a certain task, it's a hundred percent success rate, and you know, five is a 50% success rate, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So it has this kind of tabletop -y feel to it. If you're like, well, I only have a one, but I really want to try to do this thing, I'm going to risk it and roll the one. Um, it's really good. And if awesome. I added it to the game of the year list, so you all have to play it. Unfortunately. You know what you think. And we don't have cool. to pay for it. Yeah. Technically. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on Game Pass. Seventy dollars. It's and it's not if I think Listen here, I Grant played it on well. Switch and I think it's twenty or thirty. It's not it's not a full triple A because it's not a triple A game. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, silence for me and on my Grand Series are common. Hey, look, I'm just gonna throw <laughs> something out there. I cannot back this up and I barely believe it myself, but there's a solid chance that they wouldn't have had to sell this game for seventy dollars if they didn't pay so many celebrities to be in it. I don't think fucked. so. <laughs> yeah, they probably Those wouldn't go for the I 70 like anyways. <laughs> yeah. They're not doing the 70 because they have to. They're doing it because they can. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have questions about Citizen Sleeper. No, absolutely not. To the I, news. I'm excited to play it. I, 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 I saw your message. I installed it. I was kind of putting it off because I wasn't sure it was for me. But that's mm. the great thing about this game of the year list is that you are forcing me to play it. And I can't <laughs> wait to tell you how wrong you are at the end of the year. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I think <laughs> it's, you'll, it's it's a game where you'll know pretty early on if it's not for you. Because um, it, it really only has like the only kind of game game play is some di choice based dialogue and then using the dice to complete tasks around the station. That's kind gotcha. of it. But, yeah, but I'm excited. I mean, you're forcing me to play it. And I think overall, it's better for me that I give it a shot. Yeah, it's just really good sci-fi, man. I love it. I love it Loves so much. I sent an email to the developer, <laughs> telling them Did how much say... I loved it. Oh, okay. That's, telling them to go so fuck weird. themselves. No. <laughs> well, um, no, so that's. I have had previous communication with them because I was a Kickstarter backer. Um, yeah, there they was some your money like, and no there was but there yeah. was some issue with something that we had to resolve over email i can't remember what it was so wow okay 
Riveting. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Citizen anyway. Sleeper, it's on the list, folks. Ian Gibson, do you have anything to add to the list this week? I mean, we got a real low energy stream this week. I do have a game to add to the game of the year list this week, and it's called Everybody's Golf. No, I'm just kidding. I know it's not eligible, but if it was, folks, holy shit, would it be on the list? But before we do that, let's talk about uh, this is kind of a in joke because the other game I have on my list that everybody else can see is V Rising, which is very big and popular this year. And uh, after talking to Zach about it last week and talking to Will, we both purchased it and we played it this weekend. And I, I mean, I probably put. I'm going to say six or seven hours into it this weekend, and I was like, I thought I was ready for it, but I think this there's kind of a based on this Nicholas Winding reference Valhalla Rising. Yes, that's right. It's a Viking game. It's very bloody. It's very sexy in a very disturbing way. No, this is um, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I should describe the game. It is basically a uh, will correct me if I'm wrong, because as far as I'm concerned, you're the perspective pervert. This is a three quarters angle. It's not isometric, um, but you basically are a little vampire running around a world and it has elements of all sorts of different games. You know, it has a little bit of uh, action RPG where you're building skills, kind of like a Diablo, and then taking out enemies, uh, but then you're looting them, but then the loot can lead to you building your own castle, which is your home base where you're crafting new items and stuff, and then you're planting stuff in the ground to build up a little garden to get items. So it's kind of combining a lot of different games. I think the closest that people are comparing it to is Valheim, which I think is an apt comparison. The The mechanics are different because it's more of a Diablo than it is like a third person, but... Um, in terms of the, the core gameplay, it's very similar to Valheim and how that gameplay progression goes. Totally. However, I think the combat's fun. I think it's got a lot of cool stuff in it. The tutorial was pretty good as well. However, there's a big problem with this game, which is that it's you can't really play this game by yourself. It feels like it is leveled more towards having at least one other person there with you. And the reason why is because it kind of ties into... There, there is like a punishing factor to this game, and I think it's unintentionally punishing in a way, which is that um, as you're playing this game, there are bosses you go against, and they tell you the level of the boss, and even if you're at the same gear level as the boss, and you go fight them, it's a good boss fight, which means it's challenging, it's dynamic, it's different, you feel like you're really in a fight, but if you die to that boss... You drop everything in your inventory next to that boss, and you now have to spend, on average, about five minutes going from your respawn location back to the boss. So it's one of those things where it's like, if I want to solo this boss, it's probably going to take me a couple tries. And that means if I'm doing three tries, that's at least, what, 15 minutes of me just running across the map between respawns? And it's and it's it's annoying, quite frankly and so it got to this point where like will and i were trying to be on at the same time and i'm not sure if you felt this way as as well will where it was like in order to really progress in the game we had to get through these bosses and we really had to wait until we were both on in order to do that whereas in valheim the progression wasn't so firmly tied to the boss well it kind of was but there was still a lot to do tangentially but it really feels like in v rising like there's so many bosses and they hide a whole bunch of skills and powers and tech unlocks behind them that you feel like you constantly need to be taking out bosses and by the time you get to like the mid-20s bosses which is only five or six in it's kind of too punishing to solo because you yeah you you don't have you don't have the tech yet to set up your own waypoints you're trying to find the best spot for a castle so lo and behold it ends up being five minutes just to run to a boss which means if you die another five minute run back to them and it, it i think that's that's a bit too much for me i, I don't know will you played it as well how, how are you feeling about it I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think the bosses are designed to have groups of people take them on, but the rest of the game is not designed for groups of people, which is yes. kind of weird. Like Valheim, there was a lot to do when you were the only one on. You could go harvest resources. You could build your cool house. You could explore a little bit. Um, but the uh, when it's just me in V Rising, you need so much crap to just build a stone floor or stone wall and it's all placed where like on a grid so it's not like i'm trying to come up with some cool new thing um to do it the the only thing i like about v rising which i think other um uh survival games need is just passive passive income machines yes where it's like i can just put a bunch of stuff in the machine and the machine turns the logs into planks 
and I can just leave it there, and it's doing it while I'm doing other things, and I can come back and grab it all. Cryptocurrency. Yes, I want my cryptocurrency to be mined while I'm doing other things. The other thing uh, that was annoying, but it's in early access, Mm -hmm. and not all games have this, is that when no one's on the server, it's still running. So, like, I logged on the next day, and it was like, welcome to day 58. I'm like, I just started this server yesterday. So, like, we never get the blood moon or anything, because we're never on at the right time to get it. Uh, It's just kind of frustrating. Yeah, it's a little weird. But I, I now that I think about it, I feel like all they have to do is just add in that they do have i think you can eventually craft way gates which is their teleporter system but in valheim when i remember what we would do is we would still want to take on bosses while we're on at the same time and like you said there's plenty to do outside of that but even when we took on the boss we would make that 20 minute trip to the boss location and then boom teleporter down this is our teleporter we're putting a fence around it we now have an easy way if we die we can get back here in like 20 seconds and v rising doesn't have that at least in that early to mid game so the problem is you can't do anything about that five minute boss run whereas in valheim it was like no be smart about it do a little bit of crafting do a little bit of unlock boom you've got the teleporter and you can do this in a much easier way as long as you're smart about it v rising is just like no we're just going to make it annoying for you to run back and forth and and all they have to do is just fix that. Just just let me place a temporary teleporter, temporary respawn or whatever. Boom. Easy. Done. I'll be back in. I'd, I'd love to play more of it. But it just felt like I hit a wall way too early in that game and, and I'm not going to keep going with it. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's a bummer because it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm glad I gave it a shot, though. It really felt like it could end up on the game of the year list. But the game that is going on the game of the year list for 2022 is Everybody's Golf. Actually, I think I don't even remember when this game came out. It's it's I'm going to say like 2017 or 2018, Wild. but it's a couple of years. Here's the thing. Everybody's Golf is the PS4 kind of comeback of Hot Shots Golf, uh, an old uh, uh, golf on the PlayStation series. The reason why I'm playing it is because PlayStation Plus Premium or PIS Plus, as I like to call it, came out recently Jesus. in North America. They had a big catalog. Catalog's OK. And I just went through and I downloaded a bunch of games. I downloaded like one was called like European truck racing. And I was like, hell yeah, let's race some. I was like, let's race some semi trucks. And literally three corners into the first race, I was like, this driving physics feel terrible. And I just quit and uninstalled (laughs) the game. (laughs) I I downloaded Disaster Reporter 4 and I really want to stream it. So that's kind of what I was doing. And then I was like, everybody's golf. Like I'm in the mood for a golf game and I didn't buy the new Mario golf game because it kind of got tepid reviews. And so I was like, okay, sure, let's do this. And folks, that game can run around all over the green. Yes. Yes. They can run all over the, it's just like the presentation is there. There's all sorts of mechanics. There's all sorts of like stats and stuff. And it's just like real cutesy fun, but the golf underlying is just solid. I do have one complaint with the game, which honestly, I played like five or six hours of it between now and what Monday when it came out, because it's just like long work days. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to like just knock out some holes. Um, I'm just going to do a lot of strokes. Uh, Here's the problem. It. For about the first two and a half hours of me playing that game. I could only play the first nine holes of the first golf course. And for the next two and a half hours, I could only play the second nine holes of the first golf course. I don't I don't think I'm doing anything wrong, but there is like a progression system that you're going through where you play tournaments and that gets you XP. And then after enough XP, like a versus pops up and it's like a one on one challenge and then you beat them and it like ranks you up. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm rank three. I've literally played this game for like four or five hours and I have one golf course unlocked. And so every time I play, whether it's a versus or a tournament, basically the only options are like, do you want to mirror this? Do you want more wind? Do you want like a bigger cup or a smaller cup? And that's it. It's the same holes. And so it's weird. It's like, I really, really want, I want more golf courses because otherwise the game's going to be boring. But at the same time, the use of the country club. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the other thing, the 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 golf mechanics are so good that I keep playing it, even though it's the same 18 holes over and over again. So I it's it's really good. It's just a very, 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 very solid, entertaining golf game. Highly recommend it. It's on PlayStation Plus, folks. Uh, I took cool. your advice and I uh, downloaded it and I I made the most horrific character today. Um, <laughs> they're eyebrows are beneath their eyeballs their nose is on their chin their mouth is in the middle of the face um (laughs) 
they're dressed as a woman uh, with a little boy's voice, uh, and it is incredible. <laughs> um, yeah. We should play some time because it's. I it's really want fun. to. Uh, Karen and I just finished some strokes uh, before the podcast, uh, and she was having a blast with it. We were. Uh, I don't know if you can use two controllers. You probably can, but we were just passing the one controller back and forth. That's cool. Uh, which was that. great, uh, and you can do up to four players that way. Um, and it was really fun. Uh, again, I only had access to the one course. We played the nine holes on it. Um, I don't know if your character's progression carries over to multiplayer because it was like, I couldn't tell if the, sure. it was like low, mid, and high for your character when you chose them. So I couldn't tell if you were ranking your character at like low power, mid power, like high tier power. Um, I, I'll have to read it more carefully. I was just trying to set it up quick. Um, but I will say the intro to that game is the most pump up awesome intro. It's got this song about clapping your hands together and and playing golf and everything and I was so fired up that uh I just kept I couldn't stop playing golf. I also did a quiz right off the bat, got all 10 right. Uh and it was it was great. I can't go back to yeah. the rank 3. It's the beginning. I'm just so happy that we finally have a good game on PlayStation. Finally. Because honestly, finally. I touched that I touch that console once every six months. And now yeah. I'm like every like two, three times a day, I'm like, let's fucking play some golf, y'all. Yeah, I did the same thing you did. I went through all the PlayStation. I downloaded Jack and Daxter Precursor Trilogy, uh, the new newer Shadow of Colossus remake, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Death Stranding Director's Cut, um, Disaster Reporter 4. <laughs> I really want to play. Yeah. Um and then oh, there was a couple other games I downloaded, but Returnal. Like, I downloaded Returnal. Oh, Returnal! Yes, I did do Returnal because I want to try that out. Um, and then uh, oh, they had Code Veronica, which I've always wanted to play, but it's only freaking streaming. Um, which seems like an awful decision. Yeah. So I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Uh, I was very upset by that. Uh, anyways, folks, it's time for the news, which means we need to play the new news theme, which I was hoping I was people would. I was hoping people Oof. would be here for it, um, and I—I I honestly, Good I feel them. betrayed because I asked this person to come to the show um, and be here for the news, just and they're them not. Just here. call them up real quick. They're streaming right now, and I just—I just popped in their stream like ten minutes ago. I said you're gonna miss the news, uh, but they've got forty viewers, so they're not gonna stop. Just call um, them up. Yeah, I'll call him up. I don't even have his phone number, this man. Anyways, it's time for the news, folks. It's just time to play the news theme. Here it is. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you, though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Now there's even more, and I don't wanna bore. Just wanna apologize to one of my favorite guys. My dear friend Zach, I guess lit your ass. And for that, I'm sorry. But it's back to love. Unexpected. Wow. Just going to add a new verse every it. week. <laughs> yeah, I had a new. Oh, that song man. is. I just want to say, Zach, I played the song. We're going back to the original one because it is only 13 seconds long. That version was 50 seconds. But yeah. I added it this morning and I said, uh, no one would give me Zach's address, so I couldn't send him flowers. So I said, why not add another lyric to thank him? So I lazily UK. wrote something and smashed my ukulele while saying it. And uh, kind of worked out. Heck Nailed yeah. that high note, too. Um, folks, time to talk about the news. Uh, where do you guys want to start with the news? Do you want to hit Xbox recap, or you just want to go... Yeah, <sighs> let's, 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 you know, We're honestly... Talk about Neil Blomkamp's last Starfighter. It's not on the let's, list. Let's go through, <laughs> let's go through, let's go through the other ones, and then we'll end with Xbox. Okay, okay. Um, a quick hit I put here at the top, uh, Ian and I arguing about this before the show, Dragon's Dogma 2, Dragon Dogma 2, 
uh, officially announced to be in production. Um, it was leaked two years ago on a Capcom. Uh, I think it was a a um, uh, investor uh, like yeah, uh, slideshow right. that was on there. So uh, they did a little stream today during the Final Fantasy stream. Uh, and they talked about the history. Actually, it was kind of interesting. He was talking about all the games that influenced him to make an RPG it, from like Street Fighter to all this other stuff. And then um, it basically ended with three of the developers unzipping sweatshirts and showing Dragon's Dogma 2 logo, the which Superman was fantastic. It was, it was Dragon's 2 Dogma. They yeah, had yeah it was great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they were in the run. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, it, that's what it was. Yeah. There, I also was reminded Netflix is making an anime based on that yeah. series, which is they interesting. Had, they've announced uh, a couple of video game related animes that I have since then not they had three seasons of castlevania that was very good the first season i only oh, watched the first season it was very good yeah it actually might have been four seasons there's a was richter there's a, well, show the they just announced just like four episodes and then i think there's three proper seasons that are like 10 episodes yeah, and now yeah. They've got the but new it was one. good it was good yeah um i really enjoyed it so i just wanted to shout that out <clears throat> uh they announced that also during the final fantasy stream they announced final fantasy 7 rebirth and final fantasy 7 crisis core something yeah 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 so those are yeah. coming out as well um anyways let's get into the news here the grammys an association of old women i am led to believe uh that uh grammys. rate music uh sorry that is a top tier joke boys uh has decided to introduce a video game music category in 2023 <laughs> um i believe uh i forget where it was uh, oh, it says it here, 2014. I think in 2014, no, it's before that. Video games have won awards before. I believe they added a, a video game music category, and now they're adding multiple video game music categories. Good. Um, five new awards, Good. including best video game soundtrack. Um, that's awesome. Good. Video game music is some of the best music out there. Yeah. Um, it's fantastic. And now they need a stunt performer category at the Oscars. Yeah, and they need to stunt into the Oscars with the category uh i'm excited for them uh it'll be uh the new categories will be at the 2023 grammys officially known as the 65th annual grammy awards now kanye west um so that'll be interesting to see uh cool little story there what's um, gonna gonna storm most, the, what's the most gonna out of left field presenter who could present a grammy to like grant kirkhope or something Banjo Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. No, he's too close to video. He was games. in Destiny. Yeah. Oh, you're right. He Hope did for do the future. Music for Destiny. My favorite that music video, if you've never seen it, is the greatest music video in the history of the it's world, bizarre. with the ghost of him coming out, and they're just sitting Holographic around watching it. Sir Paul McCartney. God, it's like you just finished killing a bunch Destiny of enemies, just... and you're just sitting down to watch Paul McCartney. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> um, who would be the most like maybe like Elton John? I'm trying to think of the most detached no. from reality uh who wouldn't know I, what I a think video it's gonna game be is. like it's gonna be like in memoriam so it'll be like the year elton john dies it'll be his son that, that is a presenter like it's gonna be some really weird thing <laughs> they try and mash together i doubt for the best video game um <laughs> moving on here uh what is this uh ian enlighten me about your favorite playstation series god of war God of War. I I don't know why this is on here because basically God of War Ragnarok planned for 2022. Bloomberg is reporting it's still on and it's planned for November. Next news story. So. That's pretty I, much it, right? I only that's think it. that's coming up because everyone's saying it's going to be delayed to 2020. My interest, okay, my interest in care. God of War has actually heightened since watching SG One and just being like, man, this Christopher Judge is delightful. <laughs> He's amazing. <laughs> He's amazing. And God of War is not a bad game. It's just not my game. Sure. So. Thank you. He's finally grown, folks. <laughs> I'll take it back. Ah. Uh um okay this is the one you guys want to talk about duke nukem movie in the works from the cobra kai creators folks uh, gentlemen what is your mm. what, duke nukem what is your experience with duke nukem? i know of him i never played any of the games i know him i played a little 
I played the Duke Nukem 3D demo in like the early 2000s. Okay. Um, which was years late, but I was like, this is kind of cool. I do want to go back and play Duke Nukem and Duke Nukem 3D. I've heard they actually hold up decently if you can get them running. Um, I think it's a really cool, unique property. Like there are a lot of video games that try to be macho and Duke Nukem always kind of felt like it was like, yeah, yeah, we're macho. So we're dialing it up to 11 and then multiplying that by 10 X. Cause we're just super X macho and we're like in on the joke, but we also are the joke in a way. Like a, and like, like a Johnny Bravo esque macho. Exactly. Isn't. Yeah. And so like having them do that and do it in a movie considering that that video game ip is basically dead is heck yeah do it up do it up but we talked about this before the stream i think there is the version that we know is going to get made which is john cena's deadpool which is not going to be great but there's the version we want to be made you guys ever see that movie that bobcat goldthwaite movie god bless america no no it's basically like this man in his 40s or 50s who's just like really like angry and grumpy and just starts killing people that upset him like somebody cuts him in line at the grocery and he just like <laughs> shoots him in the parking lot like i kind of want duke nukem to be that where it's just like somebody who has just like serious problems and like a very distorted worldview and they're in just the normal world and just wreaking absolute havoc almost like uve bowl's like killdozer guy yeah, yeah, in a way where, except Killdozer guy had had a valid reason, but uh, <laughs> Jesus, Christ. I don't know if you've read the Killdozer story, but it's pretty effed up. No, uh, I, no, I'm well aware. Oh, the government the okay. is attacking Jake's internet connection. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the, the small town government from Killdozer is attacking Killdozer. Jake. But I just mean like, like I want to see it like take Duke Nukem, the character over the top obscene crazy and put him in the normal world and then just have everything. I want blood splurting everywhere. I want insanity. I want piranha 3D levels of just chaos and craziness. I want RRR. I want America does RRR. That's what I want. You know, but you see now, the film executives that are watching this have heard you just say that. And what they heard was somebody pulls duke nukem out of the computer into the real world and now he's trying like to last action Honestly, hero. i'd be okay with that weird science i'd be okay with that that's that's fine i'm just Not worried it's literally I, I don't think they have the balls to do that they're literally i i i know i kind of joked about it but literally i think it's going to be john cena's deadpool and it's going to be lame should play duke nukem? bruce campbell jesse Plemons. Honestly, uh, the guy from uh, the guy who plays Homelander in The Boys, Anthony Starr. Yeah, he he'd could be, be pretty good. good. There's a um, lot of great choices. And none of them will get the role. I just want to say uh, to my fans. No, I, I was thinking hey, Batista. It's not quite the same, but I wonder if there's a world where they could, it like the way they kind of shaped up Wolfenstein into something sort of meaningful. Mm. I wonder if that's mm. I mean BJ Blaskovitz was yeah. never as mouthy as Duke Nukem and but I wonder if that have a little something. bit more of like a meaningful story with the whole kind of alt history that's true angle but I, yeah, I, I could really just see a story being, of Duke Nukem it's basically like aliens attack and he, I think he's like a police officer police adjacent but I think I think it could totally be Freedom Starship Fighter. Troopers <laughs> where you present him as people think he is and you over the top it to the extent that it becomes satire of its and a critique of itself. I think you could totally do that. that. Now, something we do know folks is that he would have been there on January 6th. Um, he, Duke he Nukem? Would have been. Taking back America. 100%. 110%. <laughs> no, Duke there's... Nukem was at January 6th. There's no, no there's doubt. there's that whole bit where he's like punching nazis is a slippery slope and i love water slides <laughs> yeah but that was the voice actor yeah yeah he also I, loves i think he would have been i don't know six. you know it voices look, don't look, know what look. their brains are thinking think about trump what is trump like he likes <laughs> big dumb titted women right what do you think duke nukem likes He's going to strip clubs. He's talking about America and throwing money and smoking cigars. The beginning He's of MAGA. forever is a little uh, not great. Duke Nukem is MAGA. I He's think 100%. that would, if if you're doing like an over-the-top satire, Starship Troopers, Paul Verhoeven type thing, then I think that angle definitely would work. 
Yeah. It, it depends because because the great thing about Starship Troopers is that you, there's part of you, especially towards the beginning, that you sympathize and you are with the characters 100%. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can go full MAGA. I think you got to go like American pride in a way and be like, yeah. And then things start slipping. You're like, what are you, what are you doing, buddy? And so by Wait, the end, he's MAGA. By the end, every he's time MAGA. they're showing, every time new soldiers show up, they're always like five years younger than the previous yeah. new soldiers. Wait, the movie's over. There's like 12 year olds flying the spaceship. <laughs> yeah. God, I what a fantastic it. movie. It's yeah, I incredible. should watch that. Um, Shin Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I also love that Paul Verhoeven's like, yeah, I read like two chapters of the book and it was the most boring thing I'd ever read. <laughs> the book, the book's terrible because literally the first chapter is them attacking this alien planet. And there's this like throwaway paragraph where he's like, there was a shiny building. I think it was a church or something because I blew a hole in it and there was a bunch of babies in there. So I rolled a grenade in and left. And it was like, what? <laughs> what? It was literally just describing like, genocide of alien civilians and children what's wrong with that um they're <laughs> aliens um folks next up um tactics ogre reborn leaked on the playstation store uh now no, someone who's never played a tactics ogre game i believe they're like final fantasy tactics in the yes. sense that they have the same word in their title hmm. yeah I, I don't have much to talk about this other than I've always heard fantastic th things about this game. I've always wanted to play it. And there's always been this rumor. So this is looking more towards it's real. I think this is another back catalog like the uh, the Chrono Trigger re uh, remake rumor that where PlayStation is doing some good things like they did with uh, like Square Enix did with Final Fantasy VII where they're going back. Mm -hmm. They're finding old games that actually need to remake and not Last of Us and putting the effort and time into it, into modernizing it. And I'm all for that. So I'm Do excited it. to see this one. Um, uh, I think I put this in one, this one in here. It was just uh, Avalanche Studios, makers of Just Cause, uh, are working on a new roguelike medieval game called Ravenbound. Um, I just want to put that on people's radars. A, because I like roguelikes. And uh, B, I've always liked the Just Cause games, especially one and two. Three and four are iffy. Um, those games are more the fun. same. More the Mad same. Mad Max yeah. was the iffy. Totally. Yeah, yeah, I've never played Mad Max. I want to. It's, it's always fine. like four dollars. It looked pretty, but that was about it's, it. Yeah, it's one of those games where you're either okay with it or you love it, and yeah. that's a that's a good gamble. Um, life's a gamble. Uh, and then finally here, uh, the GS. Oh, is this not the thing they posted at the PC? Or the Xbox Extended. I saw like two different updates of well, let me put it this way: developer diaries. This is this is a three-minute video that GSC Game World posted. Uh, they're the developers of Stalker Two. If you remember, they're out of Ukraine. They had to pause development because of the war in Ukraine. Now development is back on, and I just wanted to highlight this video that they put out. I don't know if it was at any of the other shows, but it's basically a three-minute video, kind of like a vlog where they're just like, "Hey, this was us working." And then war came, and this is how it's impacted us. So there's lots yeah, of like crazy. very touching shots of people being like, my office is the bathroom now. And there's one lady who's like, I live and sleep in this corridor because it's the only place safe from airstrikes. And this is my new dog who only has one eye, and I found him in the wreckage one day. Um, and then it, it ends with, I, I say this jokingly just because I don't know how to handle the situation where they're like hey some of us are serving in the armed forces and they have shots of like like lead ai uh engineer like you know on a on a, a machine gun and then they have the community manager and he's holding an ak-47 and it's just like okay i'm not gonna fuck with that mod i'm not gonna go and shit in their forums <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like the most threatening looking community manager ever yeah it's, it's just a terrible situation and i thought they absolutely totally. deserved a shout out this game looks fantastic they're doing as much as they can i think we can excuse their nft uh a bobble because they pulled it out and uh their their country's under attack so it's mm -hmm. it's nice to see that they are still persevering and surviving to make the game that they have really wanted to make and i for one cannot wait to pay full price for it i don't care that it's on game pass they deserve your money you should buy this game when it comes out Zero totally. questions asked. Just buy totally. it. I don't even care if you can't play it. Just buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Agreed. I'm excited for it. Uh, they did show some footage of the beginning of the game 
uh at the xbox extended thing and like you said a game looks so good and i'm just so excited for it and they spelled I, I think Chernobyl it's unreal engine right. 5 yeah i think, I think it's unreal engine 5 uh yeah i think you're right i think i, think, I right. think it is um and then finally uh folks our little xbox update here now i went through all the games and i kind of popped out the things that i thought were interesting uh if there's stuff that's not on here if you guys want to look that xbox is linked so if you want to look through that and let me know but these are the things i thought were interesting because it's my show um so we're going to talk about them um first up redfall now last year they showed the redfall trailer uh which was pretty cool um yeah yeah, cinematic cinematic cinematic, thank you cinematic trailer uh and it looked cool you kind of weren't sure what it was all that sort of stuff so they showed some gameplay and you know what it kind of looks like a better back for blood uh but with vampires yes yes i this is gonna be a hot take but my problem with this studio my problem with arcane games has always been that they are either immersive sims like prey where you really feel obligated to go check out every single corner and every single item and for me personally that's uh, a bit too tedious and frustrating or like with a uh, death loop where they are trying for something but it's a bit too polished as a triple a title and that loses some of its charm and seeing what's here where they're really focusing on, no, it's just about the shooting. It's just about the co-op. It's about the teamwork, the team play, the, like, the shooting combat itself. And you don't have to heavily explore environments. You don't have to deal with some some weird mechanic or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. Like, I always thought their core gameplay combat felt pretty good. And so giving me that in, like, the next iteration of four-player co-op versus horde gameplay heck yeah look pretty good what did you guys think i mean did you watch it i saw after the fact i didn't watch it live but i Mm. without like being able to really you know get my hands on it and feel the gameplay it it didn't look perhaps as kind of the the flow didn't look like how prey felt or how deathloop felt um, but it, that's you know that's just me looking at it. I'm not playing it, so who knows? I trust Arcane as a studio because I've enjoyed what I've played of them so far. Um, but didn't they have like a weird stumble right out the gate with story progression is only tied to oh yeah the host of the multiplayer session? Yeah, story progression, but not XP and some other unlock, which is uh. weird. Because that's yeah. the thing that I feel like matters more if you're worried about people hopping into somebody else's hosted session. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like it's like you totally get your unlocks and your progress, but if you play through the campaign with somebody else, you're not going to be able to then go back and play those same missions. You're starting at level one on your own game, which it's such a weird distinction to make. It's like it's either you prevent all of it, which is a bad decision, or you allow all of it, which is the great decision. To split it down the middle like that, it just yeah, seems weird. It's a little odd. But yeah, I'll, I'll certainly give it a shot. When yeah, it comes yeah. Out. it'll be on Game Pass. Game Pass. I'm excited. We'll we'll do a stream of it. Uh when was that coming out? Does anyone know? It's early 2023. I don't I'm not sure they put a date on it. Yeah. I think it was just spring. Got it. I think it's good if they just have the year of the window. Uh next up, uh, uh Hollow Knight Silk Song. Finally, uh the indie game people uh, certainly at my work, exploded with excitement. Uh, it has been a running joke for like ever since I've been there that every every live stream, oh, Silk Song, and then everyone goes, what? And they go, no, just kidding. Um, so it's exciting to see that. I know a lot of people like Team Cherry. I have played a little bit of Hollow Knight and I fell off of it. Um, I don't think that was anything to do with gameplay. I think I just, something else came around. Uh, it wasn't bad in any sort of sense. Uh, I like Metroidvanias. I really like, uh, I, I played Symphony of the Night in the past couple of years, which is the Metroidvania. Um, uh, well, it's not the Metroid part. Uh, it's the Vania part. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? You Are you guys Hollow Knight fans? I've not played Hollow Knight, so I, I can't speak to it. I know it's very well reviewed, and I know a lot of people who like it. I'm happy for them. Or, or, or not. Or I'm sorry to hear that. Or whatever, as the meme goes. <laughs> Like, I'm glad they finally got a chat. Like, this is the new Elden Ring in terms of people being like, is it there? Is it there? Is it yeah. there? Are they going to show anything? They're going to talk about it? So I'm glad they got a trailer. But it's it it ain't it ain't for me, folks. Yeah. 
It was, uh, for people who don't know, it was originally DLC, and then they turned it into a full game. Uh, so uh, people have been waiting for a while, because I think it was originally a lot closer before they changed it. So that's why it's felt like so long, because it's changed th that, that big change, and uh, that can happen. Uh, next up, Forza Motorsports coming back, everybody. Seasons hey. change Everything. Let me, can I, I, look, we're a little low on time, so let me hit this for you. Hit it. It looks fantastic, Ooh. graphically, yeah. kind of. There's some wonkiness with it, but at the same time, uh, video games have absolutely 100% plateaued in terms of graphical quality. Um, yeah, sure, you could get a little bit better, but it really doesn't matter at this point. In terms of the gameplay enhancements they talked about, they talked, some of the points they talked about before they reiterated, like, we've done like a 48 X enhancement on our physics system in terms of how many times it's sampling and different factors that it's taken into account. All that being said, however, from the gameplay they showed, and again, me not hands on controller, but just looking at how the car was behaving. It's Forza. They didn't really do much. It's still a little bit too arcadey. And if you're looking for an arcade sim, Gran Turismo is still the way to go. I've talked about it before. Forza games just don't quite feel right. And so seeing them not really do enough for this, I'm going to play it because it's on Game Pass. But yeah, you are. I don't know. This is no, a very Neil particular Blum camp. Gran Turismo. Yeah, this is this is like this is an arcade game in sim clothing. And that's a very particular niche on the arcade to sim spectrum of racing games. And that. I don't need that because if I want more arcade, I'll just go to the left and I'll play Mario Kart, etc. If I want more sim, I'll go to Gran Turismo up to iRacing, etc. So I know they're making this. I know they're excited for it. Sure, it looks great. But again, that doesn't really matter. I don't really see where this lives when Forza Horizon is the exact same game, but with open world and challenges and a lot more charm to it. So for them to still be making this traditional track based racing game. Not quite there. I don't know. We'll see how they do, but I don't think it showed that great. It showed exactly what it is, and that's not good enough anymore. Yeah, it looked like a car game. Room, room. Um, the, now my favorite part. Uh, Microfo Microfo yes. Microsoft Flight Simulator 40th anniversary coming out in November. Adding Top Spirit of St. Louis. DLC. Adding the Beechcraft. Adding the DC. Anola Gay. Droppable a bomb, <laughs> fat man, little boy. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, what if though? Amelia Earhart's <laughs> lost plane. Um, also I gliders, helicopters, imagine. but also yeah, folks, crazy. The Pelican from the Halo. It's out now, and apparently it's amazing. And I, I want to play it. Did they just? Okay. It's just not like the Banshee or or anything. It's just the no, Pelican. Just, just the, the Pelican. Pelican. We need and we need to stream this because I really want to because they showed a cockpit view of it quick and it had those little cool military computers that have all the buttons around them, like in all those jet yes. games you play. And I've oh, I just want those because they're so cool. Um, yes, I, they, I really want to check added, this out. They added VR support too, so I should really try out VR with that game. Oh, that's so good. Um, it's is not going to be as good as V12 VR, now, right? Yeah, it already came out. The okay. jet and they added the, the carrier when the movie. Man, should came I out. install Windows Microsoft Flight Simulator on my computer? It's good. It's or good. I put it on my Xbox? Maybe, maybe I'll fix my weird control issue that I talked about. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You don't just... don't put it on the Xbox. Don't put it on. The, let me tell you why. The Xbox is the PC don't version. I think we talked about this. It's the PC version. So literally the UI is identical. So unless you want to like use the joystick as a cursor to go up to different menus and like have Destiny? to click them while you're flying pretty much, but, but somehow <laughs> worse, it's not worth it on. It's not worth it on the console. It sucks. Okay. I won't do that. Um, I'm very much looking forward to that. So we will check that out. Uh, Lightyear frontier. I only put this here because it looks like Titanfall two plus um, farming uh yeah on a planet Pl and if farms were mechs or gundam gundam you ride inside of yes um Can, i'm look, i'm just gonna i'm gonna throw this out here like i this is not me trying to be mean but this is genuinely this no man's sky keeps putting out updates where they're like we're adding base building we're adding mechs and Space all this whales. stuff 
And in my opinion, all that stuff lands where it's like, sure, it's new content, but none of it really meshes well together and you don't really want to play with it in some sort of like progression manner. It is this a feels like a sci-fi game right now. Yes. This feels like it has a lot of that stuff, but from the beginning and built in together. Like you are in a mech. You have your farm and homestead that you are building as like a survival thing, but not super punishing. And there's co-op. This looks awesome. Perfect game pass game. Loving it. I'm yeah. kind of surprised. This seems like just from the title that it would be something. This would be one of those games that you hear about that's like, oh, yeah, Disney is suing them to try to get the name the light. I was just back. about to say that there's no way they get to launch with this name, right? Mm -mm. No, I don't think yeah. I don't think so. No, because yeah. there's been a couple games like that where some other huge multimedia conglomerate has come along and be like, no, you can't use word. I guess I can't yeah. remember any off the top of my head. But. Um, yeah, uh, no, oh, uh, Bethesda did it with scrolls. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Pray for gods. Pray for Bethesda the gods also to did change that. the spelling. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Pentiment I thought looked really, really neat. Uh, it's sort of uh, if you don't know, I actually learned something. A pentiment is a painting that is painted over. So when you like medieval paintings, when you oh. scrape it away, there's another painting underneath it, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, so it's all in that Renaissance painting style. It's by Obsidian. Uh, it's sort of like a I, I couldn't quite tell if it's an RPG or kind of like a you're just chatting with people and getting stuff that, done. This is everything. the one. This is the one that was rumored as. Sorry, I was really hoping the name would come to me. It's the communist police text game that came out a year or two ago that was very popular not papers please papers please no 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 communist text-based choose your own adventure you're running around the the police officer's name like cuts katsumori or something like oh, that Oh, disco elysium disco elysium this was rumored uh, uh, before as obsidian's disco elysium oh i did not know that yeah so this is one of those games where honestly the first minute or two of the trailer i was like i don't know it seems a little thin but as soon as the Obsidian name came out and I made that leak connection, I was like, oh, I think this is not showing like the story depth possible here that well. Yeah. So knowing that there's a depth of story behind it and there's probably choices, et cetera, makes the game that much cooler. That yeah, much that's more exciting. I, I, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I just thought it looked, the art style looked great. It's the same because um, uh, I saw people confusing it with that uh, potion maker uh, simulator, I think is the same sort of okay. art style. Um, albeit a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, Pentiment, I'm excited for. It looks really cool. Uh, next up, quick, uh, Hideo Kojima popped up to just say that he is in fact working, on, working a on a something. video game for Xbox, uh, a cloud, cloud based experience, um, which then, uh, Phil Spencer on some B roll at a party that was played during the Xbox extended said, uh, he keeps, he says, Kojima keeps calling it an experience. It's a video game. He just likes to call it an experience. <laughs> 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 to which that's I very was, key. <laughs> it's very key. Cause matrix awakens was an experience. Yeah, you know? I was just like, that's pretty good. Uh, so listen, I'm excited for anything that guy does. And the excitement on Phil Spencer's face with the fact that they're working together is really cool. Yeah, um, phenomenal. I think he's always wanted to get them in that Japanese market, and he's starting to do that. Same, I didn't put it on the list, but his face and excitement when he announced that they were work, they were getting Persona stuff onto Xbox. Yeah. Uh, he was yep. so visibly excited about that, and that's kind of like what I like about Phil Spencer is you can tell he's not just a suit; like he's excited by things, which is is neat to see. Like um, Reggie, yeah, like Reggie. Yeah. Uh, my body is ready. Uh, and then finally, the end of the show, they showed t the Todd in the jacket, waltzed out on stage, <laughs> kissed four women, Ian punched four guys in the face, and stood then on his showed, tippy toes. Yeah, <laughs> stood on his tippy toes and showed us his penis, and then said, "Hey, here's Starfield." Hey, and then he fucks a game we've made twelve <laughs> times before, but now it looks marginally better and is in space. And hey, oh, uh, we're still just as excited. <laughs> And it, wait, isn't this is they always talk about it like it's been in development for 18 years 18 or something like years. that. So so it has it has the nugget been, of an idea has been there like, for the name Starfield has been out there for like 10 Starfield. years. I want to say no Starfield. Starfield. 
Garfield has yeah. been out there for he like 10 years. And he flies the spaceship. Do, do you think Garfield, like we know Garfield didn't go to January 6th because he's lazy. But you know he was <laughs> and there it was a Monday. in spirit. He was there in spirit. Was it a Monday? I don't think so. I feel like I feel like that's. I'm gonna look it up because I feel like that's a great joke. Is that Garfield would have been a January sixth, but it's a Monday. Uh, I just remember my parents were in town and we went to the PF Changs and the TV behind the bar was playing coverage. Oh. And my dad was like, "They threw smoke grenades in the Capitol. What's happening?" And I'm like, I, "I'd been seeing it on Twitter for like hours." I'm like, "It's nothing. Don't worry about it." I I just remember when um when it started popping off like my like my my family group chat were just like hey something's happening at the capitol and like i turn on cnn and cnn's like i'm not sure what's going on and then i like open 4chan and like people are already posting selfies from the from yeah. like the capitol chamber and i'm like sending out the group chat and i'm like yo they're in there they're in there there are guns drawn and it was like 30 minutes before i really caught up i was at work Anyways, with it was one chris day. from save data uh, what okay. did you it was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry, so Garfield, folks. Garfield, Garfield was been. there. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> Anyways, um, look, look, we're gonna butt heads. Do you want to do it now, or do you want to prep it? No, I don't want to prep anything because I, I just think want to build a mini Nostromo and fly it around. I think what they show. I don't, Jake. You keep That's saying mini. I, I think you can make a full size Nostromo. No, I'm looking at the size of the modules. You, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna be one to one. It's the gonna Nostromo's be like, not that big. It's even without the refinery. It's still a pretty big no, ship. You I see, know. like when they when they land on LB426. I and think the little, you could the hit it. Elevator carries them down, and you see them I standing know. next to the leg I've of the ship. I've seen it's the movie. Big it's big. I think you could do it. It's chunky. You know, honestly, it's one of those ships where, like, I'm not saying it's not big, but it doesn't look big. Yeah. No, yeah. you know, without the without the refinery for scale. Um, yeah, you wouldn't know. But it, listen, they showed like, off this big. gameplay. Um, it looked. I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked pretty smooth and seamless. I thought the kind of things they showed off with the base building and the thousand planets oh, yeah, and the space. Head. Listen, I'm excited for this game. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna play it day one. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's on Game Pass. It's on game I'm looking Pass. forward to it. Yeah. Um, here's my problem. This fucking game, okay? What? I'm getting upset. I have no skin in the game. But it's just... <laughs> this game, they've been working on it forever. This yeah. is a brand new IP from them. Totally. They keep doing little teases. They're saying, yeah. we're doing things different this time. Whoa. They finally show some gameplay. There is very, very little in this game that is actually new. The I mean, setting, all of it's new. The spaceships. That's it. The graphics. Not really. That robot. It's a new it's a new around. engine, but the graphics don't look great. The people's faces look wonky. They're doing the exact same camera perspective. Yeah. Like the shooting doesn't quite Do look great. Do the same great. thing. It's the exact No. It's worked it's every old. time. It has not. Fallout 4 wasn't that good. Fallout, Fallout 76 was, was even worse. Yeah, but Fallout 4 changed. That's why it wasn't good. They added no. a voice. They did third person uh camera angles when they talking to people. Person. Oh, it's still, it's still not, it's still, like, the point Skyrim is they are was not good. taking enough, they're not Fallout taking enough gambles good. to, they're not doing enough gambles to do something new, and the problem is what they've been doing as a formula, other games have done, and done better, like, with Outer Worlds, it's better, so the problem is they can't just do I, the same formula over and over but again. this is a much bigger scale than Outer Worlds. But the point is, they are sticking to their formula. And that doesn't work anymore when other people have taken your formula and done better, like with Outer Worlds. Right, but I don't think Outer Worlds did their formula better. Uh, when you compare it to, like, Fallout 4, yeah, 100%. I mean, Fallout 4, but Fallout 4 is a mistake. But the point is, the point is, not really, but the point is that they're not doing enough new, and they shouldn't feel comfortable about doing the same thing. So literally watching this, other than the space station building... Spaceship I mean, building. the spaceship building, I was like, and the setting, I prefer sci-fi to fantasy. I was like, it's just another one of their games. That's not enough anymore. It's just not, you know, there was nothing I wow listen. in that. I get it. There's a lot for of me. stuff in there that looked mediocre. Like, like, oh, you're going to be scanning stuff like No Man's Sky. Oh, you got to shoot this ore to gather it. Very, very, like, very bland graphics. 
it it was just like there were a lot of checklists populating yeah. like excel spreadsheets populating in my brain a lot of dead-faced like, npcs Ooh. just like i don't think this showed well and there's a lot of people that agree with me a lot of people didn't think it showed that well yeah i was kind of surprised i again I, I, like i'm a big bethesda fanboy uh i think it looks fine i thought the faces looked great i liked that they had returned to the no voice the straight up uh talking to people i thought some of the planets look great the the spaceship builder looked awesome i like the fact of yeah. the sort of base building isn't a predetermined area you can kind of go anywhere and do it um now the one yeah. thing i actually had a conversation with someone and i think i'm right uh, and i think they're wrong uh which is the thousand planets i do it's not bad. think no no it's that's bad. not it i i think it's great i don't think those thousand planets Oh, sorry, I should say, this person says those thousand planets will be procedurally generated for each player. And I don't uh, agree I don't with think that. so. I think no. I, I, yeah. they're probably, they've been procedurally generated already. Yes. yes. And that's what I would plugged say. Into the and then and they've added everything. The right. That, I agree. That's yes. what I explained. Because there's never a, like, it's not that type of game where, like, you could, you and your friend could go to the same planet and it'll be different. Like, it's just not the way Bethesda does things. I would be surprised if they did it that way. And I don't know if I would be annoyed. I'd be kind of impressed. But I would also be annoyed that my planet wasn't the same as someone else's planet. I think with, with Bethesda's meme ability as far as game-breaking bugs go, yeah. I would be super cautious of betting that kind of procedural generation. Yeah, the and they, they just had a new article out slamming their... I don't want to say slamming their QA, but slamming their treatment of qa mm. um so so i i think the problem with a thousand planets i have is there's a couple different ways of doing this thousand planets you know they're going to be procedurally generated pre-procedurally generated like we talked about so then you're coming in as a level designer and you're either going to do the mass effect thing where you grab a planet and you drop a couple interesting points which are going to be like pre-made facilities that you're tweaking slightly like oh here's a research facility it's taken over by pirates here's an interesting local artifact etc so there's just like thousand planets but there's like four pins on each you can visit or it's going to do the no man's sky thing where no matter where you land it's going to generate stuff around you like fauna and and animals and stuff but when there's so much of it like that none of it really becomes unique or interesting or core to the mechanics of the game so you just end up landing in a random zoo everywhere and after the fifth or sixth time you're just like so what so it's one of those things where when he says like a thousand planets it's like Too no many. yeah no and also I, that, i'm interested and, and i think that's I think it's formulaic just to go back to his formulaic like when he did skyrim he's like look at the size of this map and back then we believed him and we believed the game industry and we said there's gonna be so much to do in there you can't fool us anymore you can't fool us like that anymore and he acts like he can't i whew, I'm getting hot i don't know i, I think skyrim there's think plenty to do on that map there, uh, there's an interesting there's an interesting balance i think especially in sci-fi games and I, I will try not to drag this on too long because i know we are over time but um there's a game that we made a, a spotlight video for a while ago called mirror moon um which was a game where you explore procedurally generate like tiny procedurally generated planets that you can walk around over the course of like yeah. 20 seconds um but sometimes the planets don't have anything on them you just land and there's not anything there. Sometimes there's a building. Sometimes there's this kind of building. Sometimes they don't have anything on them. And the designers said that they did that specifically. They programmed the procedural generation to sometimes not generate anything because that's how, in theory, if you were exploring a solar system, not every planet is going to have something interesting on it. Um, yeah. Not even to say, you know, yeah, you know, Drake equation type stuff of maybe, you know, there's this percentage of, you know advanced civilizations out in the universe maybe whatever um but even you know interesting geography or interesting whatever um so i think there's an interesting balance to be struck there because they said then when you do find something it's more special because not everybody yeah. has it um but a thousand planets is is too many knowing it's that they're going to be pre-generated in most cases and i think i had read i couldn't corroborate it but like there's really only like four or five major hub cities that's correct. And all those planets. there's a key thing. You do not land on these planets. They, yes, they came out and they said that it's loading in and out, which makes it 
that I feel like half the fun of landing on a, a random planet is actually landing. See, I, I was okay with that. I, I don't like like going down into I planets. like reentry and I like yeah. reaching escape let me, velocity. Let me fly around. Let yeah. me pick something and be like, oh cool, let me look go over here. I like like let me propose something. Do you want a thousand planets that are random full of nothing? Or do you want 10 planets that are like, yo, this is the urban planet. This is the snow planet and they're handcrafted. And I think we know what the answer is. It's you want, yeah, you want the 10 planets. You want the 10 handcrafted unique planets. Yeah. So fine if it's just one system. Yeah. With the 10 handcrafted planets. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm getting so hot under the collar of this because Todd came out and he tried to sell us a game built on game design principles from 10 years ago. 10 plus years ago and we've 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 played those games over and over again and they don't work as well anymore and so for him to get up there and act like none of that has happened makes me think hey if you're just completely blind to all that like evolution in game design over the last 10 years then how am i supposed to think your combat's going to be good your skills are going to be good your dialogue's going to be good is all of that 10 years old as well and that's what makes me like so surprised to see this. They hyped it up so much. It's next. It's a huge leap. And it turns out it's not. It's 10 years back. Uh, the only thing I want to say just to just to uh, go not go against you, but um, you don't know if they didn't do the thousand planets, there'd be 10 well-crafted planets. Like it could sure, either be, be four, four of these hub cities and a thousand planets or just four of these hub cities. Like, I would rather take yeah. four of these subsidies in a thousand than just the four cities, because that's more stuff to sure. do. It's the same with, like, The Last of Us remaster. Those people might not have a job if they weren't doing that remake. Um, you just yeah. don't know. I that's agree fair. with you. I would rather have the ten well-crafted planets, but, like, th- you don't even know if that was ever on the whiteboard there. Like, there could be a reason they're hitting this thousand thing uh, anyways. And, and to Jake's point, I think... Um, I would really like to know what that sort of random procedural placement stuff is. Like, Mm -hmm. first of all, how many different things are there that could get placed? Like, are they placing little villages? Are they placing just a, Oh, an outpost I go to, uh, are, are there planets that there's nothing on? Are there planets that there's like just one or two things? Are there planets that, Hey, let's generate several of the things right next to each other and make it look like an outpost. Like that's the kind of thing I want to know going into this. And that's the kind of thing that will bring me from, Oh, a thousand planets do. Oh, a thousand planets, mm-hmm. and I can happen across. Yeah, I need to know what the, like, what yeah. the draw yeah. is. Why am I going I can... to the planet that doesn't have a city on it? Right, and and their system in Skyrim and also Fallout Four of randomly generating quests, while not super uh, robust, uh, in the interim could have been improved. Where you could go to one of those planets and have a pretty good quest, maybe generated from one of those people there you don't know or they have a bunch of pre-written quests that are more involved that are spread out across those planets which is another thing that could happen so yeah yeah like i I think you're right they could totally do this well i think my main complaint is how they presented it totally yeah yeah i I agree 100 percent um i'm excited for for that game i mostly because i just like i really like bethesda rpgs i always have uh so it'll be fun to check it out and a good time uh folks that's gonna be the show for today uh i'm gonna hit uh, i think that's the show right we got nothing else Mm. it's 10 25 i'm gonna hit the outro button here and we are gonna get the heck out of here folks thank you so much for tuning in uh the news was fun the games we've been playing is fun go play everybody's golf if you got the playstation plus thing it's very fun with friends go play the quarry but don't pay 70 dollars for it uh, and go play Citizen Sleeper. It's on Game Pass. I have it loaded on this PC right now. And I'm going to go check it out. Also, check out the Steam Summer Games uh, demos. There's a bunch of demos. I just downloaded Sweet Transit. There might be other games. So go check those out. Uh, Jake, thank you so much for filling in for Kyle. I'm glad you were here. I'm sorry it is so hot in your apartment and your fire alarm. Hey, your fire alarm didn't go off. It didn't so there's go that. Off. That's good. Do it. That's Do it now. Great. Yeah, put it off now. Oh, Hold it off it. now. Yeah. Uh, Ian, thank you so much as always for joining me. I couldn't do this without you, but I also probably couldn't do without you. Um, yeah. um, folks, if you want to listen to more of our content, um, Sunday, 12 p.m., 12 p.m., noon on Sunday Eastern, we'll be doing um, 
Sunday service. Father Ian and Father Will will be here. Uh, they're actually out back right now hanging out. Uh, but they will be here uh, to present the Lord to us and present their Lords to Him. Uh, it'll be a great time. And then... Uh, Sorry, uh, uh, Saturday night, I'm actually on Save Data's uh, donation. I almost call it a charity stream, but I'm pretty sure the money goes to them, so it's not a charity stream. Um, uh, I'll be on at 9 p.m. Eastern playing XCOM uh, Mario Party style, uh, which will be interesting. We like earn points and stuff. Uh, I picked the class that will get me the win, so that'll be fun. Uh, and we'll uh, see you all next week.